Folks, this is the RunCam Eagle, and I'm showing it to you today. I'm always interested in hearing about new developments in the field of FPV cameras. Uh, the, the 1177 has been my go-to for a long time. It performs very well for a lot of people. The RunCam Eagle is interesting for a couple reasons. One reason that it's interesting is it comes in either 4.3 or 16.9 aspect ratio. So if you fly a set of goggles or a screen that has a 16.9 aspect ratio, this camera may be a choice for you. And I was gonna start this review by saying that there aren't very many 16.9 cameras out there to choose from. When the Dominator, uh, the Dominator 3 came out, it was 16.9 aspect ratio. And basically, if you bought it and you wanted 16.9, you used the camera that came with it. Uh, that's this, I think, Fat Shark one. And uh, suffice it to say, the cameras that come with most goggles are not really top-of-the-line cameras. They're, it's, I would guess it's probably okay, but not spectacular. I don't know. I've never used it. But then I did a little web searching. I tried to be a responsible reviewer. Go figure. And I found there's actually a surprising number of 16.9 cameras. Here's one from Lumineer. Here's one from Rotor Geeks. And here's one from Fox Ear, uh, the budget option. And... What I would really like to be doing right now is comparing these cameras to say, if you've got a 16.9 screen, which one of these should you be using? And how does the $37 Foxeer hold up against the more expensive 49, 55, and 65 freaking dollars for these other cameras? But unfortunately, I don't have those cameras right now. So what I'm going to show you is I've got the Runcam Eagle and I've got the Runcam Swift, which I just happen to have in my Canis M4 build. And I'm going to show you some flight footage and other test footage between them. But before we do that, let's just run down the specs on this camera and see what we've got. One thing that'll certainly catch your eye about the Runcam Eagle is that it is a CMOS camera. It is not CCD. And the rule of thumb for, well, forever has been that CMOS FPV cameras are crap. The cheapest ones are CMOS. They don't provide good image quality. They have terrible dynamic range and bad uh, light handling, bad transitions from dark to light environments. And the only reason you fly them is if you just are absolutely on a budget. But RunCam has a reputation for quality. I don't think you could really argue that. And if RunCam says this CMOS is worth putting their name on, it certainly deserves some attention. If we scroll down here, we can see they've got some fancy dynamic range thing, global WDR, whatever that is, uh, and supposed to give you excellent dynamic range. Well, we'll certainly see about that. It's got an aluminum frame that comes with it. It's got the little, uh, the markings on it for the up tilt degrees. That's kind of nice. You could put a specific number of degrees of up tilt in. Although I dare say many of us are not going to be using this bracket since many frames are coming with built-in mounting options for this style of camera. And well, they should. It even comes with the hardware for mounting in standard screw sizes, screw holes. It even comes with little bushings. Very nice touch, little bushings for mounting it on your frame. And I almost forgot to mention, I almost finished this review and forgot to mention what may be my favorite single thing about this camera and all Runcam cameras. They come with freaking silicone coated wires instead of stupid plastic insulation that shrinks back from the soldering iron and cracks and is terrible. When I saw that the Runcam Swift came with silicone wires, I just I fell down on the ground and I cried tears of joy that someone had done this. And I just learned, and this has nothing to do with Runcam, I just learned today that the um the tramp the tramp video transmitter it comes with silicone wires for its header too oh my god you can finally buy a video transmitter and a camera that both come with silicone wires i'm so happy okay so it comes with silicone wires and that's that so what yes thank you run cam thank you so many sins i will forgive if you give me silicone wires with your camera <laughs> thank you run cam Another thing that's really, really nice about this camera is that it is switchable via the OSD between NTSC and PAL. And I've had the experience of accidentally ordering a PAL camera when all my other gear is NTSC. And many things like Fat Shark goggles can automatically switch between NTSC and PAL. But some of my other gear can't switch, like one of the DVR screens that I have. It doesn't switch automatically between NTSC and PAL. You have to do it manually, and it's a huge pain in the butt. So the ability to switch the camera between NTSC and PAL via the OSD is a really nice feature, even though in many cases it's not going to matter which one you're running. So let's start by just looking at some stills, and then I'll show you the moving flight footage, and you can compare for yourself. 
I selected this first still because I think it shows off the Runcam Eagle's wide dynamic range algorithm, and it shows it working pretty well. If you look down near the fence near the road, you can see detail in the shadows of the trees on the Runcam Eagle. Uh, down near the street, you can see the two uh, sort of sticky, uppy triangle peaks where there's a gate uh, and, and so on, whereas on the Swift, the, uh, the street is largely shadowed in darkness. Here's a very similar shot between the two, and what I notice about this is that if you look at the side of the barn, there are details visible in the Eagle that are not visible in the Swift. Also, if you look at the ground, you can kind of see the pattern of shadow in the grass on the Eagle, whereas the Swift is kind of just one sort of muddy gray green blob. So you're definitely getting more shadow detail out of the Eagle. In this area, I'm going through the woods behind the barn, and this is a very sort of shadowed area, but sunlight does shoot through in various parts. And one of the things I want to call out to you here is the really awful lens flaring on the Eagle. And I picked this example because it's particularly prominent, but it, was, it wasn't constant, but it was enough that it was noticeable and annoying. Uh, the screen on the Eagle is fairly washed out. That's not just effect. The Eagle in this test has generally had lower overall contrast, but perhaps with more shadow detail than the Swift. Uh, but in this case, the washed out uh, nature of the Eagle screen is the result of the lens flare that's happening, not just the fact that it has a slightly less contrasty image overall. So now I'm going to let you watch both of these flights, and you may want to go back and, and rewind and watch one and then watch the other. They don't sync up exactly, but you can draw your own impressions. And in order to present the Eagle in the best light, I have been showing it to you in 4-3 aspect ratio, which is how I saw it in my Dominator goggles. But if you have 16-9 goggles, I'm going to show it to you how it actually looks, and I think it should make a pretty big impression. Now that is really something. Uh, I was really surprised at how big of an impression this made on me. When I started watching this through my DVR screen, uh, my handheld DVR, not, not my Dominator goggles, and the handheld DVR is widescreen, and so I set it up to display widescreen, and just moving the camera around handheld really, I don't know, maybe it's just novel, but it really felt different. It felt kind of like going from a 2.8 millimeter lens to a 2.1 millimeter lens. Suddenly you can see so much more. But there's not the fisheye effect of a 2.1. You're getting this extra information at the edges of the screen, but it's just extra information without really a downside. It's really something. Uh, is it enough to make me give up my Dominator HD2s and go buy some Dominator V3s? Uh, no. But if you already have 169 goggles, why wouldn't you be using a 169 camera? Wow. Here's another test I did that I think shows off the light handling characteristics of this camera. I aimed it at the trees with the sun out of frame, so a shadowed area, then a bright area with the sun in frame, and then back under the trees again. And you can see, uh, I want you to see how the lens flare affects it. It's definitely like there. Ugh. But also the camera's a little bit washed out in the sun as it tries to sort of, with its wide dynamic range, 
algorithm get as much shadow detail as it can. The image as a whole seems to wash out, but you can see things as opposed to the shadows just becoming completely black. In this test, I'm putting my hand over the lens to show how quickly the uh, exposure adjustment is happening. And that seems pretty slow, but if you look at the same thing with the Swift, it's not actually that much different. And here's the same thing with the Swift. You can see that between the shadowed area and the bright area, the contrast level is more constant, but also there's not as much detail in the shadow areas. And here's the Swift doing the exposure change test. I think the Swift is a little bit faster, but not by much. So what's my final word on this camera? It seems like it is an acceptably good camera. You can fly with it. I did fly with it. Uh, it, it in terms of dark to light transitions and in terms of shadow detail, it is good enough to fly with. If you want a 16.9 camera, and if you have 16.9 goggles, I think the footage should convince you that you want a 16.9 camera. It's very, very impressive. Uh, so if you want a 16.9 camera, you certainly could do a lot worse than the Eagle. But there are a couple outstanding questions, though, and I think they deserve to be acknowledged. One is, I did not tweak my DVR settings between the uh, Swift and the Eagle because I wanted to be as fair as possible. Both of the cameras are at their stock default settings. So I set the brightness and contrast for the Swift, and then when I went to the Eagle, I didn't change it because I didn't want anyone accusing me of tweaking the DVR settings and misrepresenting how the image looks between the two cameras. But I have a feeling that if I had started with the Eagle and then gone to the Swift, I might have found the opposite. It may be that all the Eagle needs is to bump up the brightness a little bit or bump up the contrast a little bit, and you may sort of get the best of both worlds. I'm not sure to what degree the wide dynamic range algorithm is affecting how uh, how the Eagle is interacting with the image settings on my goggles. I have a feeling though that the sort of flatter contrast on the Eagle is a result of the WDR algorithm because it, there are many times where there seems to be more than adequate contrast and there's other times, especially when something bright is in the sky, when the whole image seems to wash out and my guess is what the Eagle is trying to do is to keep the shadow detail in without letting the whole thing get, get sort of over contrasty. The Eagle stock lens has a terrible, terrible problem with lens flare. There it is, and you'll be dealing with that if you have this lens. And I don't know to what degree that's common to all 16-9 cameras or all of this style of lens, but if there's one suggestion I could make to run cam, it would be to do something about that lens flare. Maybe an aftermarket lens would fix it. The real outstanding question, and I'm not going to answer this question today because I don't have the gear to do it, how does the $65 Eagle compare to something like say, the $35 Foxeer. They're both 16.9 cameras. The Foxeer doesn't have the fancy schmancy wide dynamic range algorithm or any of the other fancy stuff that RunCam has put in. And that's going to have to be a question for another day. Thanks for watching. Happy flying.